Hey, Bunny, guess what? What? No, you have to guess. You have to actually guess. Yes. Car 54, where are you? No, Bunny, don't be silly. Not on a Friday. <laughs> I mean, sure, I'd be okay with Car 54, where are you? Back when we were taping this show on Thursday. But now it's Friday. It's near the weekend. This show is more easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. Friday, Friday, getting down on Friday. It's sort of a vibe here on the old Pope on Film podcast. Yes. So just loosen up your necktie, put on some flip flops and patchouli and a puka shell necklace and just chill, brah. <laughs> on some Dave Matthews band, smoke a bowl and just mellow out, bro, because it's a brand new Pope on Film podcast. One that isn't held down by corporate regulations. <laughs> Guess what? I don't have to sell you a fucking membership card. Right. I don't need to get your goddamn email address. And I certainly don't have to be nice to you. So, hey... <laughs> Hi, hello, and fuck you, because it's homework time yet again on the old Pope on Film podcast. Yes. <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your memeing and your NRA shaming and kindly pay attention for just a moment. Then you can go back to NRA shaming, because that is an important thing. Yes. Each week, the dreaded Council of Diennas chooses a homework assignment via the fiery ritual of carousel. A homework assignment that has been painstakingly chosen with the expressed intent of bettering our listeners, nay, all good and righteous individuals everywhere. But not you, Jeff Sessions. Yeah. Racist, sexist, gay bashing, Keebler elf, Davy and Goliath motherfucker. Screw you and the whole Jew. The hole you crawled out of, guy. Guy looks like a redneck golem. He does. He really does. Well, I, I would like to keep this ring because it's my precious. <laughs> it's my redneck golem. That's my southern, southern golem. <laughs> and this week we are catching up on some old news by discussing a vulture interview entitled in conversation, yeah, Quincy Jones. Quincy this was Jones, I, and I haven't even really heard very much about Quincy Jones lately. I I'm pretty sure I heard this interview mentioned on every nightly talk show. Yeah, yeah, I definitely heard it on Colbert, and I think I heard them mention it in passing on a. Uh, on uh, uh, Seth Seth Myers, yeah. Not sure about uh, uh, what's his name, uh, the Tonight Show, because I hardly watch that at all anymore. I I I I'm not sure which one the Tonight Show is anymore. Kirby, Kirby Scott. So, yeah, Kirby. Don't <laughs> ass down, Kirby. Jeez. So Quincy Jones is a legend. Yes. He was nominated for 79 Grammys in his six-decade career, not including the Grammy Legend Award they gave him in 1991. He was the first black person to be nominated for Best Original Song in the Oscars. He has worked with a massive list of people, including but not limited to Michael Jackson, Ray Charles, freaking Aaliyah before she died. Yeah. Frank Sinatra, Van Halen, Dean Martin, Will Smith, and more. And his deft, sharp producer's ear was responsible for Michael Jackson's off the wall thriller and bad, as well as We Are the World. So if you're still confused as to why Dan fucking Aykroyd was there, you need to ask Quincy Jones. <laughs> he's he's an amazing guy, but the thing that I love the most about him is the fact that he married a woman and had sex with that woman, and that woman gave birth 
to actress Rashida Jones, who played Ann Perkins on NBC's Parks and Recreation. Okay. Huge fan of Parks and Recreation. Yeah. And of course, probably uh, if you're talking Quincy Jones, if you're talking Quincy Jones, there's one thing that he is known for more than anything else he's done. And I'm not talking about palling around with Frank Sinatra in Vegas. I'm not talking about producing Michael Jackson's most successful music. I'm not even talking about uh, giving birth to Ann Perkins from Parks and Rec. He's most well known for playing himself in the Academy Award winning film, Sandy Wexler. Yes. And I'm sorry to once again bring up this movie. It, 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 it hurts every time. I'm sorry. Every I, time I lose a little bit more of my soul. But let me tell you, Bunny, this is what I want you to do. When we're done with this episode, mm. I want you to go back to your house. I want you to put on the costume, the mouse ears, the the the, the bird costume. Yeah. Because I want you to remember where you came from. <laughs> That's not a perfect reference, but I might be the only person who's trying to reference uh Adam Sandler's Sandy Wexler movie, and I just get, I get points for that. I I I would definitely award those points. Yeah, yeah. the man is also it's, it's bold. It's bold. Yeah, yeah, it's bold. The man uh, Quincy Jones is also eighty four years old now, about to turn eighty five, and as a result, he is firmly in I don't give a fuck mode. Oh God, yeah, and that's he definitely what was. Me- that's what makes this interview so goddamn good because it, 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 in a recent interview with vulture.com vulture magazine, is it a magazine? I, I don't know. I guess just in a recent interview with vulture Quincy Jones speaks with honesty. You usually don't see in a place that's not coming from Jennifer Lawrence's mouth. Okay. <laughs> like seriously in the first paragraph, he's like Michael Jackson stole his music. Like, dude, <laughs> dude, I know you're about to be 85, but haven't you heard? No one is allowed to make fun of Michael Jackson anymore. Yeah. We all hated him, and then he died, and now he's a saint. Like, <laughs> not allowed to make, no one is allowed to make fun of fucking Michael Jackson anymore. So basically, um, here are the Cliff Notes version of Quincy Jones's Vulture interview. Yes. Okay. Okay. Michael Jackson was a musical thief and he got a ton of plastic surgery because his dad abused him. And also Michael Jackson got addicted to anesthesia medication, which basically means, and Michael Jackson is addicted to the knife. Addicted to the knife? (laughs) And addicted to the knife, he needs a little help with the agony. (laughs) Really proud of that. Really proud of that. And that's like paragraph one of the interview. Yeah. Like really... Like, the crazy shit comes, uh, like, fast and furious. Uh, Also, Quincy Jones believes in astrology. Yeah. And he's BFFs with the Clinton family. And he knows for a fact that... Well, I don't know know if Quincy Jones actually believes in astrology. It just seems like that is one of the things he pulls out of his ass when he wants to change the subject. That's a good point. Oh. It's it's like he had a stream of things all set up that as soon as they got to something something that he didn't want to talk about, it's like, where are you from? <laughs> uh, and of course, you would say that, Bunny, since you're a Pisces. Yes. <laughs> or are you? I don't really know. I don't know anything about astrology. I am a Libra. Okay. I but, wasn't but, Aries, but I I I, I identify as a Neo Max Zoom Dweeby. I used to be an Aries, but then I had my astrology, my astrological sign legally changed. <laughs> so now I'm a bucket. Now you're a bucket. Yeah, now I'm a bucket. The crazy thing is, is that whenever anyone brings up astrology, I say that, and the majority of people don't question it. <laughs> they just take it for a fact. <laughs> and they just leave me alone. It's amazing. I pulled out that fact like a week ago to like Emerald and Deanna and nobody said anything. <laughs> question that. I just said I'm a bucket. You know what? Whatever. <laughs> so. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, basically, like, when you bring the crazy as much as I do, there's only so much that you can uh, tolerate. Yeah. So Quincy Jones is BFFs with the Clintons, and he knows for a fact that mobster Sam Gian kinda na 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 killed Kennedy. And yes. it's like five and, and I had I had a little bit of doubt on that. <laughs> I don't think he knows. Come on, Quincy. No, he knows for a fact who killed Kennedy. Dude, that's what he says. <laughs> And it's like five minutes into the interview. Like, seriously, pace yourself, Quince. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Uh, I'm happy to be here. I, uh, I'm excited to do this interview with Vulture. I'm a big fan of Vulture. So give me your first question. Okay, my first question is, after your years of production, Michael Jackson was a thief and a rapist, and I know who killed Kennedy. <laughs> it's like, Jesus Slow your roll, Quince. <laughs> so a large portion of, of, of the press that this interview got was, uh, yeah, they mentioned Ivanka and they mentioned uh, Kennedy. But the majority of the press that I saw came from the fact that Quincy Jones fucking hates the Beatles. <laughs> so fucking much. He, 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 he literally calls them no music playing motherfuckers. <laughs> but to be fair, to be fair, in Quincy Jones's defense, like he literally goes off for a whole paragraph of how shitty the fucking Beatles were. But to be fair, in Quincy Jones's defense, if I was one of the few people on the planet who knew who killed Kennedy, then maybe <laughs> Octopus's garden would fucking annoy me too. <laughs> Come in! Also, apparently, the co-founder of Microsoft, Mr. Paul Allen, is as talented as fucking Hendrix on the guitar. I, how, I, and that came from Quincy. You gotta believe it. You just got to believe it. Yeah, yeah, I have a hard time coming to the belief of that but but to be fair he mentions like two or three times in the, the interview of quincy jones hanging out on a yacht in the ocean with a bunch of other rich folks and they're just like jamming on guitars and fucking around it, so just just being on a yacht with a bunch of rich folk uh keep that in your back pocket or mm -hmm. maybe your front breast pocket because i'll be pulling that out later in regards to steve garvey Okay. Base, Steve Garvey. Base player, player. Yes. What? Steve Garvey, the baseball player. Yes. Yes. Okay. I have some, yes. I have something amazingly excited uh, lined up. It's interesting, though. Quincy Jones is all, I know who killed Kennedy. And I can go into great deal, detail about it. But then the interviewee brings up Bill Cosby and Quincy Jones is all, we shouldn't be talking about this in public. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, excuse me? You, so so Kennedy's assassination, no problem. Michael Jackson's chemical dependency and abuse and his stealing music, no problem. Bill Cosby, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> we shouldn't talk about this here. Mm -hmm. Meet me at this parking garage at midnight. <laughs> then fucking Trump. Oh, wait a Trump. second, because probably... Where did Bill Cosby learn it? Yeah, right? Think about it. Then fucking Trump comes up and, oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is the part that I had a hard time believing. Quincy Jones, 84 years old, then says in the interview that 12 years ago, he dated Ivanka Trump. Yes. I call bullshit on that. She is 30. <laughs> right now so 12 years she would have been 24 and quincy jones would have been a, a young spry 75 year old man yeah. no we're talking ivanka no so am i anyway i believe i don't fully believe that quincy jones uh, dated Ivanka Trump, but I do believe him when he says that Donald Trump is limited mentally. Yes. Like, okay, okay. 
like, okay, still, you lost me, Quincy Jones. Like, I believe you that Donald Trump is limited mentally, but you're going to have to, like, win me back. Then Quincy gets back to reality with a rant about how you two sucks now. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Quincy. I'm back in the game. <laughs> then he disses rap as being repetitive and goes deep into musical theory. And that's when I started yawning. Yeah. And then he mentions a short list of modern musicians doing good music. And then he disses film composers. Like basically Quincy Jones is a hater. Yeah. Then he casually mentions, this is another thing that got a lot of press in the media. Then he casually mentions, oh yeah, I'm a big fan of musical theory. I really like jazz. I'm a big fan of Coltrane. And also, apropos of nothing, did you know that Marlon Brando used to fuck Richard Pryor? <laughs> yes. Yeah. What the yeah, fuck was that? And Richard Pryor and a couple of other people too. Marvin Gaye. Yeah. And then uh, some famous author. But yeah, Marlon Brando used to fuck Richard Pryor. Like, what? <laughs> and I was like, what? And he was Dude. like, what? So then uh, Quincy Jones. Did Bill Jones Cosby talk. tell you that one? <laughs> we can't talk about that in public, Bunny. Yeah. Then Quincy Jones apparently had a nervous breakdown after doing the score for the color purple. That's good to know. And he hates religion, especially Catholics and T Pain. Yeah. He hates T Pain. T Pain really fucked up his last album. And that's basically it. Quincy Jones is in I Don't Give a Fuck mode, and it's awesome. And he's just like, oh, I don't care anymore. Let me tell you all this shit. Yeah. It's it great totally was. It story. totally was. Quincy don't Quincy Jones doesn't care about you. Quincy Jones doesn't care about what you think about him. Quincy Jones is like, I'm a legend. I can do whatever the fuck I want. I'm Rick James, bitch. <laughs> Quincy Jones don't give a fuck. And it's amazing. Yeah. I love this man so much. It almost makes me want to rewatch Sandy Wexler, but I don't hate myself that much. <laughs> there is a limit. There is a limit. You got to draw that line somewhere. <clears throat> right. So... So anyway, Bunny, what page are you on? And that is it for homework this week. And we honestly and legitimately hope so. Legionitestately, we sincerely hope yes. that your eyes, minds, and wounds have all been suitably opened. <laughs> ah, but don't think you're getting out of here that easily, Buck Chacho. Don't forget next week's homework assignment. And for next week, we're going back to that yacht okay. with Paul Allen from Microsoft. Quincy Jones mentioned a couple of times hanging out on rich people's yachts. He mentioned it twice in the article, and that reminds me of something, of someone. Baseball player and insufferable asshole Steve Garvey. <laughs> the man with the Lego hair. <laughs> Steve Garvey, why, you might ask, the answer is simple. In fact, the answer is next week's homework. It's a very short YouTube playlist. It's, it's called TPOF Episode 165, Cheap Seats and Steve Garvey. Nice. Okay. Growing up, I was vaguely aware of Steve Garvey. I knew what he looked like. I may have been able to point him out on a lineup and that's about it yeah yeah not being a sports person that's that's pretty much my my relationship or take on steve garvey yeah but oh my god uh the show cheap seats on espn classic that no one ever watched they got so much out of steve garvey because yeah. he he would do these TV specials that were just absolutely unwatchable. So that's next week. We're going to be talking about Randy and Jason Sklar. We're going to be talking about Steve Garvey. And you will know who Michael Florwax is. <laughs> okay. My wife knows who Michael Florwax is. Some of my kids know who Michael Florwax is. And Bunny, you will know who Michael Florwax is. Very excited about this. 
I am excited about that. I've always wanted to know. Yeah, so join us next week. We're going to be talking about cheap seeds. We're going to be talking about uh, Sklarborough country, county. And we're going to be talking about the hilarity of Michael Florwax, a rising comedian. (laughs) That is next week. Oh, we're also going to be talking about Marlin. We're going to be talking about the the, the billfish catching. Okay. And skiing. And And Joan River. We're going to be talking about a lot next week. Skiing and billfish catching. That's <laughs> next week. So be sure and join us next week for more homework with the Popon Film Podcast. <laughs>